Hi, my name is Dr. Alec Court. I am the Director of Spiritual Life at Donaldson Christian Academy in our great city of Nashville. And I just have compiled some thoughts and wanted to make this video uh, for our DCA com community, but also for our city as well. I woke up around 4 a.m. and saw that I had some text messages from colleagues around 1 a.m. Are you at the school? Are you okay? I had heard the sirens, so definitely knew something was wrong. Uh, went down to the school um, and drove up to the utter devastation that was completely not ready for, as many of you certainly can relate. Our three leaders, um, Dr. Keith Singer, uh, Mr. Brett Sherling, our Midland High School principal and our elementary school principal, Mr. Levesque, were there with Officer Johnny Wheeler and others. Uh, and I could see the tremendous sense of shock and bewilderment in their faces. And Mr. Sherling's words uh, in that moment immediately rang out to me. He, he essentially said, we need to think about people in our community who lost homes and lost lives and who are hurting. Um, all else can be rebuilt. And I just, that really hit home with me and, and I wanted to uh, collect some thoughts to share with you uh, to expound upon that. Uh, DCA, myself, other faculty, uh, leadership, received an overwhelming amount of emails, texts, calls, offering help. And the relief effort was immediate uh, and it was, uh, it was astounding. And so that, that is uh, so encouraging. And thanks to all of you who are watching this, who were part of that, who immediately um, sent word that you would help. And, and then when it was time to do so, you came and you did exactly that. The number one thing that I continued to hear people say through all of this since Tuesday was it could have been so much worse. Uh, thank God our school was not in session. Thank God uh, many of our students were on trips. My own daughter, who is a seventh grader at DCA, was on a trip uh, to Florida. And all of them were, were away in, in safe places uh, when the tornado hit. And then certainly, you know, it hit at night, late at night and in the a.m. And had school been in session, certainly there would have been loss of life and injury and, and the tragedy is, is not even something we want to think about. And it's usually uh, having had a, a career in, in ministry as, as pastor and student pastor and now um, with students here at DCA, uh, I normally in the aftermath of tragedy used to would like to quote uh, Job chapter 1 verse 21 where Job says, uh, naked into the world I came and, and naked uh, I'll return. I didn't bring anything with me, and I won't take anything out with me. And that's where he says uh, those famous words, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away, and blessed be his name. And those words have been tremendous comfort to me personally in life when I have suffered loss and been through hard times. Um, like Reverend Brionis said at our prayer meeting uh, just, just a few nights ago, uh, it's okay for things to not be okay. We, we live in this world and things happen. And uh, we, we, we don't always understand everything. So I wanted to put some thoughts to that. I don't, I'm not as quick anymore to quote that, uh, Job 121, because there are some other factors that I now think about um, just having walked people through tragedy and, and seeing, um, you know, how it affects people differently. You know, the, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away, blessed be his name. That, that's a testimony to the faith and the power and the magnitude of the uh, the assurance that Job had in God and the relationship that he had with God. And that's amazing. But but I would never want to say anything to negate uh, the despair that many of you, many in our city, many in our DCA community are feeling over the loss of homes and precious property that, that they can never replace. You know, I, I know that, that we would say it's just things. It's just stuff. There were, there were photos and there were videos and, and, and things that... Um, can never be replaced if they weren't backed up on a hard drive or something like that. Um, I know our teachers in our elementary school wing, um, there was a tremendous sense of emotion, um, having so many things in their classroom that they used to educate and things that are personal to them and things that were given to them by students. So just want you to know all of you who suffered loss of, of precious property, who suffered the loss of your own home, where all of those memories are built, um, that our heart is with you. We're, we're so very sorry for your loss. and want you to know that we, we don't think of that lightly and we understand how painful that can be. And then the other one is, um, man, it's, it's the loss of life, the loss of wellness, injuries that people will never recover from, loved ones that they'll never see again in this life. And I, I can't imagine anything worse than that. I've heard stories of, of a pastor Whose, uh, whose daughter died in this. I have heard 
I have seen a picture online of a young family, um, mother and father probably in their early 30s with young children, a son and a daughter, all of them who were, were taken by the tornado. Um, a mother holding on to her children as, as the, the children were ripped out of her arms. And we are concerned about our building and, and we are going to rebuild at DCA. It's going to be bigger than better than ever. And we know with God's help, we can do that. And it's not wrong to be, it's not wrong to be concerned about your stuff, about your property. Uh, so many of those things having so much value for you, but collectively to, to just take a moment to think about the loss of life and the loss of health and the people that are now struggling and battling through that. Uh, people have questions. They want to know why. Always, uh, as a Christian apologist, um, and I teach apologetics at DCA, I'm all about the defense of God, defending God um, in intelligent design. You know, if there's a design, there's a designer. Defending God in the morality that's woven into us. We, we have, um, all of us that are sane, have a moral compass, and that's got to come from somewhere. If there's a moral law, there's a moral lawgiver. The person of Jesus Christ, the advent of him in history, uh, and the impact he had over this world for the last 2,000 years is irrefutable, as is the Word of God. The Bible, written over 1,500 years by over 40 different authors, from prophets to priests to farmers to kings, it tells one narrative across 16, six, 66 books. And there are 48 prophecies fulfilled from the old to the new. I teach my students this every year. I love to teach it. There are just so many evidences for God. He's so real, and he's revealed himself to us in so many ways. And I can defend him academically uh, from an evidential standpoint. But how do I defend God when something like this happens? People say he can calm a storm. He can also stop a shooter. He can also cure cancer if he wants to. So why doesn't he? Why did this happen? Why am I now missing my loved ones? My, why am I now injured? Why am I now dealing with the loss of precious property that I can't ever get back? And all I can tell you is the world's fallen and none of this was intended by God, none of it. Death, sickness, decay, destruction, none of it is of him. God created us out of his love for us with a free will because he, he wanted us to freely choose him, to love him and to be loved by him. But the necessity of free will was sin and out of sin came all of these things, all of the things we suffer through in life, whether it be emotional turmoil or, or physical pain or loss whether it be death. God did not intend these things. And one day he will set all these things to right. That is his promise to us. But people ask, why does he intervene sometimes and sometimes stay his hand? Why did the tornado bank right over here and these homes and people were saved and it banked left over here and there was, there was destruction? And the truth of it, that answer to that question, folks, is I don't know. I don't know. His ways, what he does, and what he does not do, are often a mystery to me, very often, in fact, because I am finite man. I'm limited, I'm sinful, I'm flawed. And as much as I try to study God's word, as much as I try to comprehend the Almighty, I'm never going to completely. And that's what Job understood too, I think. He didn't know. And God's answer to Job in chapter 38, if you want to go there and read that sometime. It's hard to read, and it may, God may seem harsh at points in that, but he's explaining things to Job, and it's probably the best discourse ever written on why we can't always comprehend the Almighty. And here's what I do know. Here's what I do, do know about our God. Our God did for us what, he, what we could not do for ourselves when he sent us a Savior. I'm a sinful man. All my life, I've, as much as I've tried to walk with God, as much as I've tried to obey Him, I've messed up over and over and over again. And you repeatedly see this in the Old Testament with the, the Israelites, and you repeatedly see it in the New Testament as the new church gets going and people are just flawed and they continue to mess up. And God sent us Jesus Christ to do for us what we couldn't do for ourselves, to be born of a virgin, to live a sinless life, to teach us about the kingdom of God and how we can have a relationship with Him to die on a cross for our sins, and the blood he shed there covers every wrong thing we've ever done or ever will do when we repent of our sin and trust him. When he ascended to heaven, 
and he imparted the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. God did that for us. And when I'm suffering through loss, when I'm suffering through destruction that comes from a tornado, when I'm suffering through the worst possible pain, it helps me to dig down deep and remember I, I don't understand why God does and doesn't allow certain things. I don't understand why he does and does not intervene in certain circumstances. I just know that he loves me because of Jesus Christ. And whether I am healed and, and, and set to right in this world because I follow him, or whether I die and, and go meet with him in heaven, he's going to heal me. He's going to heal me. And that, again, might seem of small comfort to people who are missing their loved ones right now, who are agonizing over their loss of their homes, having to live out of a hotel or something like that. Just know that God loves you. He loves you. He didn't intend this. He didn't want this. He sent Jesus for you. And I want our city, I want our DCA community, I want everyone to know in the aftermath of this tragedy. He did that for us. And he also wrote us a letter. And it's called the Bible. It's the greatest book ever written. And this word is an ancient word. And like the song says, it's ever true. And it changes me. And it changes you when we'll take time to read it. We live in a fast-paced society where technology is rapidly advancing and we're distracted by many things. And probably a lot of people, probably many Christians, are not even reading this anymore. And that's a tragedy because inside of this word, we find all of truth. He will guide us into all truth by his word and by his Holy Spirit who speaks to us when we read the word. And it's in times like this that we need the word the most. We, we need to go to it to find solace and comfort there. Uh, to hear a word from our God who does love us and who does, who does guide us. Man, when I walked through the, uh, the neighborhood on Friday, I was distracted by some personal things I've been going through. And my mind really wasn't in the game. I was on my way to the school to, to help out teachers move boxes, throw things in the dumpster, whatever. And then I looked up and got out of my own selfish, personal stuff. And I looked up and I saw the overwhelming outpouring of love from this community, from, from the DCA community, from the surrounding neighborhood there and there in Donaldson. Everyone, I mean, every single person I saw, and I've rarely seen this in my life, not even on the mission field have I seen it to this capacity. Every single person I saw was encouraging. Everyone was asking, what do you need? What can I do? It was inside the school building. It was outside the school building in the neighborhood. Everybody chipping in, people handing out water, people handing out snacks, people hauling off truckloads. Everything that could be done was being done. And it was a community. It wasn't just our school. It was a whole community, just volunteers coming in and loving on each other. And I saw hugs and embraces and encouraging words. I heard things like, we're going to get through this. We're going to get through this together. So just know that we have an awesome community. I'm so thankful for you all who came out and were part of that, what I'm describing that day. Um, just thank you for being there. Thank you for your heart. It's days like that that restore my faith in humanity and our capacity for good. Let's not wait for tragedy to display it. Let me pray for you. Father, we, we know that you love us. We know that you love us because you sent Jesus to save us. And we know that you love us because you imparted your word of truth to us in the scripture. We know that you love us because you guide us into all truth by your Holy Spirit when we repent of our sins and we trust you. But God, we don't always understand. We don't understand why tragedy hits, why some suffer more than others, why some lost homes and some didn't, some lost lives and some didn't, and we're left to pick up the pieces. But we know, God, that all destruction, all decay, all death doesn't come from you. It just comes from the fact that we live, we live in a fallen world where out of our free will there was sin, and sin brought all of that bad stuff. But God, you're there with us. You never leave us, and you hold us in the palm of your hand. We know that DCA will rebuild and get through this, and God, we know that with your help, uh, the, the city of Nashville will as well. Father, help us to be sensitive to the needs all around us and to be your hands and your feet in this time. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, guys.